Hey everybody, my name is Kim Siever. Welcome back to my channel. Not too long ago, I attended a church meeting in which someone discussed the LDS Family Proclamation. Part of their discussion involved coded language about how much society has changed since the proclamation was presented to the church. Their language was subtle and vague, so it's possible it wasn't referring to queer issues, but it paralleled language I've heard other church members use on the topic. It's important to remember that in every large gathering of LDS members, there will be members attending who are par also part of the LGBTQ community. I think it would be good for each of us, when addressing the saints in large numbers, to reflect on how the language we use around LGBTQ issues is received by LGBTQ members, even if the language is subtle and coded. When we talk about how much things have changed over the last 23 and a half years since the proclamation was issued, and we frame the proclamation as inspired in that context, but don't highlight any of the advancements in equal rights, we should wonder how those members who aren't the gender they were assigned at birth or who couldn't marry their loved one 20 years ago interpret our words. Do they agree with us, seeing it as an inspired document, or do they disagree with us, seeing it as a document opposed to, and perhaps even attacking, their own constitutional rights? As well, we should wonder how non-LGBTQ members interpret our rhetoric when speaking about the inspiration of the proclamation. Do they agree with us that it is inspired? Do they take our comments as justification for their existing prejudices towards the LGBTQ community? Do our words support their erasure of trans members, or their delegitimization of marriage equality, or their unwavering support of the recently rescinded mandatory church courts for fellow members who happen to be living in legal, loving, monogamous relationships? If they don't support their LGBTQ children when they come out, will they use the proclamation as the basis for their exclusion of their children? Will the way we talk about the proclamation give them ammunition to ostracize their loved ones? Or will our words encourage them to be inclusive, to be loving, to be advocates? Our words influence those who hear them, and I think it's incumbent on those of us who speak to be aware of that influence. Thanks for watching. If you agree with the points that I raise in my video, please give me a thumbs up and let me know in the comments below why. Please also share my video and subscribe to my channel. If you disagree with the comments I raise in my video, please give me a thumbs down, but let me know in the comments below why. I look forward to talking to you again soon.